Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. I'm Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Megan O'Rell. Uh, she was a 2012 graduate of cancer biology. So thank you for coming back. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you did while you're here at Vanderbilt? Yes, I was in the cancer biology department. I uh, did my dissertation work under the direction of Dr. Jin Chen. And primarily I studied a, a protein that um, had some involvement with breast cancer cell proliferation and also involvement with uh, metastatic potential. Okay, so what did you do since Vanderbilt to where you are now? Uh, since I graduated, I uh, went to a company called Campbell Alliance. Um, I had a couple of steps in between, but that's where I ended up landing. I, I didn't end up doing a postdoc when I graduated. Okay, so what do you do there? What, what's your daily activities at Campbell Alliance? So I'm a consultant at Campbell Alliance, and Campbell Alliance is a um, mid-sized consulting firm that wh whose clients are primarily within the pharmaceutical industry. And as a consultant, we typically help our clients with whatever business needs they have. Um, we provide some strategic insight into their uh, business issues and, and we help them through some of their, their problems. Okay, so what's a typical day look like for you? A lot of emails, <laughs> a lot of uh, clients, conference <laughs> meetings. Um, the project that I'm on right now, um, we are dealing with multiple companies, so there's not one specific location. We have to be uh, in person, um, uh, there in person, so we end up holding a lot of meetings over the phone, a lot of work streams are pushed forward through email, so a lot of it is just in front of my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> so how is this a good fit for you personally? I like interacting with clients. I like um, the pace of the work. Uh, it's uh, just getting multiple parties to align on uh, a direction the project is going. Is, it's challenging, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, so um, what are some of the skills that you use from your PhD training to um, in your current role? So with a PhD, critical thinking is probably number one. I mean, you are asked to uh, read a bunch of information, synthesize it, distill it into simple ideas, um, and that has really helped me with uh, consulting. And being able to not only think critically and have an eye on the details, but a key part of what I like about consulting, and I think is part of my personality is I'm, I'm a little bit more of a big picture thinker. So having that balance, you know, the PhD taught me to pay attention to the details, whereas consulting has taught me to pay attention to the big picture. So the combination of the two um, really, really helped. Okay, so um, you talked about looking at the big picture. What are some other skills that you had to learn after um, you started your job that you didn't get in your PhD training? Uh, really, fine-tuning email communication and having a good uh, presence on the phone or whether just that you're in, uh, you know, presenting in, in front of someone. And, and while I did get that with presenting in front of my committee, it's a little bit different when you're um, in front of, uh, you know, clients that are vice presidents and, and things like that. And, and also with email, it's um, just being able to communicate something clearly over email is a skill, and especially in my project, is, is pretty key. Okay. <clears throat> so if someone wanted to pursue um, a role like you're currently in, what, what are some things that they should do while they're getting their PhD training to be best equipped for the role? So it's important to get some experience outside of the lab. And whether that's interning at a small company, doing a little bit of market research, just getting your feet wet into the business world is really important because any little bit of that experience is gonna translate well on your resume. And employers that are outside of academia are gonna understand that experience as opposed to listing um, several lab techniques or, or your research. Uh, so it's important <clears throat> to get that experience outside of lab if you can. Okay. So um, what are some of the ways that you network? Um, what are some of your strategies or what does that mean to you? Networking means just putting yourself out there, um, asking somebody what they do, what they like about their job, um, how they got there, just their story. I mean, just keep asking them questions and, and seeing if any of that piques your interest and, and just uh, be yourself to, to make that connection and you know keep in touch um, if you can. Um, naturally, of course, you don't wanna stalk sure. anybody. <laughs> Um, and it, it's important to just stay comfortable. Okay, um, are those some of the skills that you 
uh, use to land your current job? What are some of those strategies that helped you find your current role? Uh, pretty much networking. Yeah. The, I knew somebody that worked at Campbell and uh, got in contact with them. And she put me in contact with someone who was actually living um, in the same city I was at the time, who worked for Campbell and met them for coffee. And one thing led to another and ended up getting the job. So okay. it's important to to really network because you never know what con kind of connections you can make. Yeah. Okay. So tell me what you wish you would have known as a grad student that you know now. I wish that I would have, after my first year of classes and before I, you know, maybe just six months into lab, I, I wish I would have given myself two plans. You know, one plan is to pursue the academic route because that's why I came into uh, the PhD program. But I would also have come up with a plan B because I think every grad student needs a plan B no matter how good you are, how smart you are, what you know, if your lab is top ranked and publishes in the top three journals, you always need a plan B. And I wish I just started that process earlier. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about your work-life balance and your current role. How do you how do you juggle that? It's busy. Um, I think the one thing I do miss about grad school is the level of flexibility you have because it is your own project. You mm -hmm. take it at your own pace. Um, even though grad school did get busy at times. Working and consulting is a whole other level of workload, but I, again, enjoy the pace and you have to decide if that's something that you're looking for. Okay, great. Do you have any words of wisdom for our tr current trainees now if they're interested in what you do now? Try to get some, again, experience outside of lab is key. Uh, get things on your resume that people outside of academia will understand and can relate to, uh, and that will help uh, transition into a, a consulting role. Okay, good. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you so much. Glad to Appreciate have you. it.